The following question reads that oxygen is uh, the most abundant element in the Earth's crust. It reacts with other elements to form stable compounds, ions and molecules. You're being asked to complete the table to give the formula and acid-base behavior of some of the oxides of the periodic three elements. So uh, these are the uh, oxides whose formula we need to give and their acid-base behavior. So starting with aluminium, aluminium remember is an ionic compound, aluminium oxide Al2O3, silicon is SiO2, it's sand, it's a giant coven structure. Phosphorus forms two oxides, one is uh, P4O6, the other one is uh, P4O10, so you could, you could write both of them. Similarly, SO3 also forms uh, two oxides, SO3, it as well forms SO2 as well. Now the acid-base behavior, the first one is a metal oxide, it's basic, whereas the rest are all acidic. This is weakly acidic, uh, this, these are strongly acidic and this is also acidic. Now part B of the question reads that group 2 elements form stable hydroxides with the general formula MOH2 where M is the group 2 element. So they are forming hydroxide and uh, beryllium hydroxide is an amphoteric compound that shows similar chemical reactions to aluminium oxide. State the meaning of the term amphoteric, so you need to define what amphoteric is. So the meaning of the term amphoteric is that they are compounds that react with both acids and bases. So they have both properties. So that's a one mark answer. And now you're being asked to write an ionic equation for the reaction between magnesium hydroxide with hydrochloric acid. So whenever you are asked to write an ionic equation, uh, what you just need to do is the acid produces H plus 1 ion, the base produces OH ion, and they react to produce a water molecule. So that's your ionic equation for this reaction. The next part of the question reads that two methods of preparing strontium hydroxide are shown. So strontium hydroxide is over here and uh, it's formed from strontium oxide which is SRO. He's adding water to it. The other one is strontium reacting with water. So state one difference between the observations you would make for reaction 1 and reaction 2. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write the equations. So these over here are the two reactions, strontium oxide reacting with water to form strontium hydroxide. Strontium reacting with water produces strontium hydroxide plus also produces this hydrogen gas. So that's the main difference that this reaction uh, and the difference should be in the observation. So the main difference is that uh, effervescence or bubbles of H2 gas would be seen. So bubbles of H2 gas are seen when strontium reacts with water. Next part is uh, state how the solubility of the group 2 hydroxide changes down the group. So to answer this part, you, would, you should know the solubility of hydroxides that it increases down the group. Magnesium hydroxide is not very soluble, it's, it's pretty much insoluble. Calcium hydroxide is partially soluble. Strontium hydroxide, barium hydroxide are pretty much soluble. So solubility increases down the group. The next part, part C of the question states that sodium peroxide reacts with CO2. So there's a reaction that's given and the partial pressure of uh, CO2 is given. It's given as 0.5 uh, of CO2 in, a point in air is 5.37 kilopascals at 20 degrees centigrade. So the partial pressure of CO2 is given and you're being asked to calculate the amount in moles of CO2 gas present in the sample of air at 20 degrees centigrade. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the ideal gas equation over here uh, because the pressure of CO2 is given, that's given as 5.37 kilopascals, so that's uh, 5.37 into 10 power 3 pascals. Remember the pressure should be in pascals when you're using the ideal gas equation. The volume is given uh, in the container in a 0.5 dm cube sample of air, so the volume is given, so that should be 0 0.5, but it should be 10 power minus 3 meter cube. So this should be in pascals, this should be in meter cube. N is, we are supposed to find that out, so N is unknown, R is 8.31 and the temperature that's given is 20 degrees centigrade, but it should be in Kelvin, so it's going to be, it's going to be 273 plus 20. And we're going to make N the subject of the equation and we're going to try and figure out what moles do we have. So the answer, if I make N the subject of the equation, N comes out to be, on my calculator, it comes out to be 1.1 times 10 to the power minus. 3 moles. So let's write that down. That's the amount of moles of CO2. And you're then being asked, calculate the mass of Na2O2 that would react fully with the amount of CO2 calculated in 1. So let's go back and see, uh, as you can see, Na2O2 and CO2 are uh, in exactly the same ratio, 1 ratio 1. So the amount of moles of CO2 are going to be exactly the amount of moles of Na2O2. So Na2O2 is going to have the same amount of moles which is 1.1 times 10 power minus 3 moles. So I'm going to use this formula moles equal to mass over MR. Uh, so it's going to be uh, if I take moles 
and multiplied by mi, I'm going to get mass. So that is what I'm interested in. Mass would be moles, 1.1 times 10 power minus 3 multiplied by the MR which is going to be 2 sodiums and 2 oxygens. So, that is uh, 23 into 2 plus 16 into 2 that would be the MR and let us find this out and the answer we are getting is 0 0.0860 grams. So, that would be the answer that would be the mass of Na2O2. The next part let us move to part 3 of the question which state that a peroxide ion has a single covalent bond between the two oxygen atoms each atom carries a negative charge, draw a dot and cross diagram for the peroxide ion showing outer electrons only. So, we are going to try and draw this O2 minus ion. So, here I have uh, drawn the two oxygen atoms, both oxygen atoms have 6 electrons, this one also has 6 electrons in the outer shell. Now, the first thing that they stated was that they have, they are forming a single covalent bond and that is exactly what I am going to try and do. So, let us make a single covalent bond, so they are going to start sharing 1, 1 electron each and that is your single covalent bond that has been formed. And the question also stated that the oxygen atom carried a negative charge. Now, if you look at the electron electronic arrangement of oxygen atom, it has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 electrons. It needs 1 electron. So, it would be gaining 1 electron from outside. So, it is going to get a negative 1 charge to complete its outer shell. This oxygen atom over here, again, it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 electrons. So, it needs 1 electron. So, it is going to gain 1 electron from outside and it is going to carry a negative charge. So, one covalent bond, so both oxygens try to complete the outer shell, they ended up sharing one electron each and they ended up gaining one electron from outside. Where were they gaining those electrons? They were gaining those electrons from uh, sodium because remember uh, there would be a sodium ion, another sodium ion over here as well because it was Na2O2. So, this is, this is the peroxide ion whose dot and cross diagram they were asking for.